Hello. Today I am going to talk about how to create cortical layers in tree shrew animals and to do that I am going to use triangular meshes. This is particularly the case because a couple of weeks ago Michael Arcaro contacted me and said that he wanted to create cortical layers for tree shrew brains and particularly he wants to have triangular meshes and he was asking how to do this specifically. And this reminded me the following, which is in Brain Voyager, there's a whole processing pipeline dedicated to whole mesh cortical depth sampling. And these meshes are specifically designed for cortical layer sampling and analysis because each of the vertices in these triangular meshes are actually connected uh, radially in the cortex. So for instance, I'm going to link this page underneath the video. Okay, but to bring the data to here and use something that is designed for a human brain is of course a challenge. So we are talking about the tree shrew which I found are these guys. So we have three shrew brain, and we would like to put it into brain voyager to create triangular meshes. But all of these are designed for human brains, so we might need to tweak a few. So let's start. So first issue is having a good segmentation that is fit for cortical layer sampling. So the first thing I would like to show you is the anatomical data that Michael sent me that belongs to the three shrews, which you can see here. This is an average tree brain. I don't know how many brains that he averaged, but it is clear that it's an average brain because I can see that in some challenging regions, there are some uh, nonsensical stalci and maybe gyri. And this is probably due to imperfect alignment in these challenging regions. So this is something to take into account. So I, this also mostly for Michael that I would be very careful in the alignment of the olfactory bulb. It seems that there are some unexpected salsi formations there. And also in this lateral part, I would be careful delineating the salsi and also checking the sulcus to sulcus alignment between different tertiary brains. In these regions, you can see that there's like, there's the visual of a double sulcus, which means that probably they are not aligned very well in some of the brains. And this, of course, makes things challenging. Anyway, like, um, so Michael already sent me a segmentation. I have worked on it a little bit. Now I'm going to show you an earlier version of the segmentation, which is this one. However, during the process, I have realized that there is a big consideration to get the correct cortical thickness measurements, especially in the <laughs> occipital cortex, I assume, this region of the tree shrew, I don't know. But here, one should be very careful how to label this structure. And to me, this looks like the superior colliculus, if I and I think of the similar structure in the human brains. And I have segmented a couple other mammalian species in the past, so I have some familiarity. So I think this is the inferior colliculus, and this big thing is the superior colliculus. But now, with regards to cortical thickness measurements and cortical layer sampling, labeling this area as white matter, that is green here, poses a problem because, for instance, this voxel that is here would be measured as really distant from the outer gray matter surface. So this will have a very high cortical thickness. However, I am pretty sure that there is actually a sulcus here and the neurons in this cortex is actually, they have connections to the white matter over there. So one important thing to kind of deal with before doing anything is to label the brain stem correctly and in, in a principled way. Therefore, I'm going to show you my improvement over it. So, okay, this is my iteration. There are a few other things that I have adjusted and went over it, but this is the most important part. So you can see that I have now delineated this anterior part of the superior colliculus and up until, I think, more or less the pineal gland of the tree like this region until here. So I tried to put a 
more or less vertical plane that separates the brainstem from the subcortical white matter, let's say. I mean, it is of course not true, like there are gray matter tissues here and neurons there, but for computing the cortical layers, we need to kind of label the white matter in a sim simple way, simplified way. And I and I found that it is pretty important to separate this superior colliculus and label it as the outside of the gray matter rather than white matter to get the cortical thickness correctly over there. Okay, I think I have made my point. And also these segmentations can be adjusted and optimized in individual species, I think individual brains, rather than this average brain. So you also see that I have extended the sulcus here, which is pretty important to get the cortical thickness correct and cortical curve, which your measurements correct over there. And the last remaining challenging area is the olfactory bulb, which I did my best as far as I could see and thinking of the other mammalian species that I have segmented, but maybe this is something to look into in the further iterations of this data set. Okay, so once we have the segmentation and the anatomical map, that is a T2 image, T2 weighted image, I believe, how can we go to create triangular meshes in the cortex? I have done this by using a library that I have written over the last two years. It's called BV Babel inspired by MyBabel and few other libraries in the past. And this is basically a Python uh, file read-write package that can be used to read and write brain voyager file formats. So this library is completely free and open source. And you can use this to go in and out from brain voyager. And what I did here particularly for Michael is that I have created the miscellaneous folder that has a single folder inside that's called video treasure and there are two scripts in here that I used to convert his nifty format into brain voyager format so that we can start uh, generating the cortical triangular meshes. I'm also going to link this underneath the video but this is a critical part of the process so I'm showing it. Okay now first let's convert our T2 anatomical image into brain voyager format. I'm just uh, making sure the path is correct in my treasury read nifty write vmr for t2.py script. And now I'm going to run that script. Here we go. So in a couple of seconds, it created two files, a vmr and v16. The difference is that vmr is unsigned integer 8 and v16 is unsigned integer 16 data precision. Now let's open, let's load our anatomical image. As you can see, the treasury brain is now loaded inside the brain version. Okay, the next thing we would like to do is to convert the segmentation. So we take our latest segmentation, change the script accordingly, and then just run that script. It's done. Now let's load the segmentation file in brain version. You can see that the Slightly different colored version is converted into the version that Brain Voyager likes and we can compute stuff. So okay, now once we are inside Brain Voyager, first thing we need to do is to compute cortical thickness because it is the first thing we need to do to create cortical layers. We go to the volumes menu and then cortical thickness measurement once the segmentation file is open. And then basically here you can look at different options but we just press go and it has started to compute the cortical thickness. Okay, once the cortical thickness is computed, we can inspect it. I have clicked Ctrl M to bring the volume maps menu. You can also reach that menu by clicking overlay volume maps here. And here there are a bunch of measurements, but what we are interested in is the cortical thickness. And just for visualization, I can change it, the minimum and maximum of this map between almost zero and three millimeters so that we have a realistic sense of the cortical thickness and you can see that the cortical thickness is now measured all around so one thing to be careful about in these cortical thickness maps is that the locations that have very high cortical thickness like five millimeters six millimeter 
10 millimeter, 15 millimeter. And I say this because in the version that I did not yet realize the superior colliculus being labeled as white matter issue, this area of the tertiary cortex was getting very high cortical thickness measurements and therefore then many other things were going wrong. Whereas here they are getting more or less correct, I, I believe, cortical thickness measurements around a millimeter and going up and up to around this region. Okay, so this is all good. After this step, we go back to volumes, cortical thickness measurement again, but now we use the second tab here to compute the mid gray matter file. So this is the mid thickness file. Here we load the cortical thickness maps that we have just computed and we are just clicking create volume. And this gives us the following image. Now I am going to press command T in macOS and we can have a look at this mid thickness map and basically you can see that this is the mid gray matter thickness when you load a secondary VMR and here choose the T2 map once it is loaded I'm going to press F8 to switch between two images or I can press F9 to have a different visualization mode and hopefully here you can see that this is the middle gray matter thickness area. Okay, once this file is computed, the next thing we need to do is to create a triangular mesh. To do that, I'm clicking on meshes and then I'm clicking on create mesh. It brings a new menu and I'm clicking on reconstruct. So here you can see that I already have a mesh. You can zoom in. Tertiary is a bit small, so it is a bit distant because this menu is set for human brains, of course. <laughs> okay, so our mesh looks nice, it's all fine. The next thing I'm going to do is to advanced mesh smoothing in the meshes menu. I click here, and there are options, but you can use the defaults. I just say go. This has now smoothed my mesh. And I'm going to save it after smoothing. And since I'm recording my video, actually my computer is a bit struggling since this is a very high resolution data set, actually 50 micron ratio brain, this one. So there are lots of voxels and therefore the mesh is highly detailed. Just to keep things sim simple uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to simplify the mesh, which is going to do vertex decimation. And I will use a very, very much simplified 20,000 vertices. This is optional and I'm just doing it for the video's sake. You can skip this step. Okay, now the mesh is simplified. You can see actually the geometry of the triangles by changing the visualization method. Okay, this is all fine and good. The next thing we are going to do is to compute cortical layer or cortical depth meshes. To do that, in this menu, when I loaded my mesh, mid gray matter mesh, I go to the meshes menu, the last option, cortical depth sampling. I click on it. And the first thing to do here is to load the thickness.vmp file, which I have just computed, that contains my cortical thickness measurement. There are many options in this menu, but I'm going to show you a simple way. So I'm going to create three depth meshes. The first depth will be at zero, which means that it will be at the white matter. Second depth will be at 0 0.5, which, which means that it will be at the mid gray matter level. And the third mesh depth will be at one, which means that it will be at the outer gray matter level. You can change this, you can increase the number of depths and so forth. I am going to use equidistance approach to keep things sim simple. And I'm going to save meshes and disable fill layers as VOIs just to keep things fast and easy. Now let's say go. It was pretty fast, it did stuff. Maybe you see it, maybe you didn't, but let's have a look. Load mesh. And there are now three new meshes. It says 
the file name that I have mid gray matter reconstructed decimated to 20,000 vertices depth 1 relative depth 0 so this is the white matter boundary I open it there's a mesh here so it actually took a couple of weeks longer than I expected Michael this to make this video because I had these edge cases happening when the curvature was very high we were getting this like inwards folding or ribboning artifacts I didn't figure out a solution for it yet but we are looking into it this was not happening in the human brain data but the point is that in this highly simplified mesh and in this quick method now the 90% maybe even higher percent of the surface area is correctly generated with regards to cortical depths and there is some folding over there which we will look into so just a side note okay this is the white matter mesh effectively now let's load the mid gray matter mesh you can do add mesh by the way okay you see it kind of got inflated a bit it's correct and now i'm going to load or add mesh as the last one that should be at the outer gray matter surface and you see that these meshes are now encapsulating each other and you can also see from the lower right hand side it has 20,000 vertices and around 40,000 triangles and this number is the same across all meshes so what you wanted which is namely having a vertex being the same one across different depths like let's say this is vertex 100 and it will always be that vertex just going down in the cortical surface when you look at the other meshes as well so you can do i don't know maybe some columnar analysis and things like that as the last thing to do i would like to show you how these meshes overlay onto the volume just to make sure that they are coming from the correct boxes so first i'm going to load the white matter mesh or the deepest depth mesh we are zooming in it's all fine for now not perfect but okay now i go to the meshes menu and i click on special transformations then i click on mesh to vmr the moment i do that it creates a new menu called volumes of interest where i can simply overlay the mesh that i have created onto the volume and you will see that there are some gaps when i overlay this mesh onto the volume because we have done vertex decimation if i would have taken it as the initial version of the mesh you would see no gaps basically here but these are basically the exact um, voxels that the mesh vertices are pointing to and by the way just a handy shortcut you can do command click to figure out where that exact area that you have clicked falls onto the volume okay, so here you can see that we are on the left hemisphere if i click on the other hemisphere command click you will see that now the crosshair points to another exact location for the where that vertex is coming from okay now let's continue to demonstrate what happened let's load mesh this time the second one mid gray matter one and now let's repeat the same special transformations mesh to vmr now you can see there's another one we can visualize both together to see how they correspond to the volume now let's load the last one and repeat the same exercise special transformations mesh to vmr and maybe just give them different colors quickly just for the visuals okay here we go so now we have these triangular meshes as different cortical depths slash layers and they are projected to the volume we can sample our image voxels with this and work on the mesh elements for further analysis depending on if you will use this or not and your future analysis i might do another video on it to demonstrate how, how to work with these data structures basically i'm going to use my own library which is bb babel that can also read the triangular mesh format of brain voyager the srf format and we can like if you need we can continue from there but this was actually pretty interesting to see the 
treasury brain and play with some meshes and so forth. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.